Hi everyone, welcome to episode three of Maths with Mr Yates. And I've got a little guest with me today. This is Smeagol. He is our Devon Rex kitty. Uh, they are a breed from England that don't really have much fur. They've instead got a bit of a fuzz. And as the weather gets colder in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, he starts to seek our attention out more and more and tends to be glued to us during the day, just so he can be bundled up and warm. Okay, so anyway, today we're going to be looking at nonograms. And nonograms are a kind of Japanese puzzle. They go by a bunch of different names. Uh, sometimes they're called Picross puzzles, sometimes Pixel puzzles, or Griddlers. I've never heard the name Griddler, but uh, Wikipedia insists that that's one that's commonly used. Um, but these are a kind of Japanese number-based crossword puzzle that I personally like a lot more than Sudokus um, because in a when you solve a nonogram, you end up with a nice little picture instead of just a grid of numbers. So I quite like doing this, the nonogram puzzles because uh, you get something out of it at the end. Now, the typical or one of the typical locations you can get free nonograms from is the site nonograms.org. And uh, they've got black and white nonograms as well as color ones. Now, color ones are quite a bit more complicated, so we're just going to be focusing on black and white ones for today. And um, so today, I'm going to be teaching you how to solve them. So each row and column of a nonogram has a set of numbers that determine the pattern that will be in that row or column. So here we have, as an example, we've got a 2 and a 6 on the left side and then we've got a bunch of squares. Uh, now, all nonograms will have this little divider that divides up into groups of five squares. So you should be able to tell at a glance how many squares there are in each row uh, and column. So we've got 10 squares in this one. And uh, we've got two and six. That means we've got uh, a group of two filled in squares followed by a gap. We don't know how big the gap is, but I'm going to assume that the gap is one square in size for the moment. It's going to be at least one square, but can be a lot bigger than that. Usually we represent a gap with a cross to show that there can't be anything in it. And then there will be six filled in squares like that. Now, Nonograms are not guessing puzzles, so what I've done here may not have been accurate because we want to use logic to solve these. But this row has, from left to right, two filled in squares, a space of at least one empty spot, followed by six filled in squares. So there actually only end up being a handful of ways that these rows can be, this row can be filled in. We can have everything crammed over to the left like we did in the picture up above. So they can all be crammed over to the left. They can all be crammed over to the right, like that. Or the third way they can be filled in is that the two can be over to the left like that, and the six can be over to the right there. And that's what we've got there. So these are the only three ways that this one can be filled in. Now, in each of these possibilities, some of the squares will always be filled in. So we should be able to see that um, no matter how we fill it in, these, this square here in each situation is filled in, and this collection of five squares, and let's just try and draw that properly, this collection of five squares will always be filled in. So no matter what, uh, no matter how we arrange it, we will always have those squares filled in. So the way that we can accurately um, fill in this row is to say that this one will definitely be filled in and this group of five will definitely be filled in. Now we can't logically say that anything else is the case. We just know that we've got this one here filled in and these five filled in, but we don't know what else is going on there. So that's an example of how you might partially complete a row in a nonogram. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try a small 10 by 10 nonogram. Uh, now I took this one from the 
uh, Puzzler Pixel Puzzles series. I'll be showing that in full screen in a bit when I discuss where we can get these from. But uh, this is their tutorial puzzle, and uh, it looks like this. But I'm just going to be going into uh, Microsoft Paint so that we can have a look at those. And uh, that's what we got there. Now I'm going to be using the two colors, um, blue and yellow, to solve this one. A blue filled in square will mean that um, a blue filled in square will mean that we have a filled in spot, and a yellow one will mean an empty spot. That's just because it's easier than drawing across when I'm using MS Paint and my mouse to fill these in. So sorry about the low resolution here, but I should get the idea across anyway. So we've got here on the left and right sides our two and six again, and I've got those filled in already how we would expect them to be filled in in the situation where we've got a column or we've got a size of 10. So this is a 10 by 10 puzzle and we've got those filled in. So we've got two good columns filled in there and we can start having a look at some of our rows. Now, some of the logical leaps that I may make here may be a bit beyond you, but um, don't worry too much if that's the case. Uh, the more you practice, the more you start to see the kinds of patterns that fill up. But in this first one, we've got a one and a one. We know that that's filled in there. We know that that one's filled in over there. So all of these ones logically must be empty. So I filled those in there. We can't do anything with these ones down here. So let's go down to ones where we've got a bit more information. We've got a one on the left side. We've got a one on the right. Somewhere in the middle is another one, but we have no idea where yet. We don't have that information. Likewise, we've got a one on the left, a one on the right. Somewhere in the middle is in, the, in there is a two, but we don't know where. Here we've got a two and a two. Now we already know that it has to be these ones because it's locked in on the left and right there. So we can fill this row out pretty much like that. In this one, we've got a bit more information. We've got a two and then we've got a one on the right side. And um, we've got these three ones in the middle. Now it may be that we can actually fill this out already. So let's have a look. It would be one, then a blank, then one, then a blank, then one, then a blank. So there's actually only one way this row can be filled out. This is a full row. So we can complete that one right here. Next up, we've got two, then a blank. We've got a one and a one, and then the two on the other side. Now we don't know where these two ones are. It could be here and here or it could be here and here. So we can't actually do any more with this row at the moment. So we've done a bunch of rows. Let's have a look at some columns here. So we can't do anything with our left and right columns, but we can look at this one. We've got one and four. So somewhere in this column, there will be a four. We've got three here already, and that one we know is, uh, is empty. So we can only go to this one down the bottom there. Uh, let's continue to have a look across. We've got two and one. We can't fit two in here, so and then have the one filled in under there. So logically, this must be the one on its own. Likewise, in this column, we can't get two in there and then fit a one underneath it, so this must be the one down there. We don't have any more enough information to do anything with any of the other ones. Here we've got a two at the bottom, so that's filled in there. So let's have a look back at our rows again. Um, so now we do know what's happening with these two ones. We know that those are filled in there. And we can also have a look at our threes. Uh, we know that there must be a three on this side, so that fills in quite logically there. This must be empty because we can't fit a three in there. And that is part of our three, but we don't know where it's gonna fall, end up being or where it's gonna fall. So that's what we've got there. Now let's have a look at what else we can fill in. We now know that this is a, oh, we've got this one here. This is a one over here. So we know that's on its own. And that means our three is there. Now we filled in our sixes. So we know that these must be empty. So as you can see, you start to fill it out and you get more information as you go on. Uh, there'll only ever be one way you can fill out a properly set nonogram. Um, so we don't want to ever make any guesses. So let's have a look uh, at what else we can do. So one of the things I've got here is I can't fit any two in this spot here, so I know that that must also be empty. 
Likewise for this one and this one. Because I, I know that those are empty, I know that I can't fit any twos in here. There are only twos in this row, so I can't fit anything in either of those. These get filled in, that gets filled in over there because I don't know which way this two goes. Then I've got one on its own. And there we go there. Um, so I've completed this column, the one and the four. I've completed this column, this one, one and two. Uh, then I can't fit a two in any of these. So I know that that's filled in, that's empty. So we're very nearly done. Um, and uh, it's often a matter of trying to find the little spots where we can fill something in. So here we've got a two and a two. So they could be either two and two like that. Or they could be two and two like that. Or they could be stretched out like that. But in each situation, we'll always have that one and that one filled in. So um, we can confidently fill in those. And then I can start doing this one. That's a two and a one. We've completed that column. This one's a one and a one. We've completed this column. This one says one, two, and one. There's only, we've got the ones on the left and right. There's only one spot for the two in there. Then we've got two and one here. One and one here. We finish this column. One, one, one. We finish that column or that row. We've got a one there, a one there, and a one here. And then that's where it ends up. So we have a little picture of a skull ending up there. And uh, yeah, that's how we can go about solving the nonogram. Um, so now some of the logical steps that I made there maybe may have uh, gone over your head a little bit, and it's fine if they did, because we're just getting used to solving them. If this is the first time you've seen these puzzles, then this will be a little bit complicated what I've just done. But I find these to be a really interesting puzzle and uh, I quite like solving these. So let's go back to our thing in here. So let's say you're interested in these puzzles and uh, you want to know where you can get access to them. So where do you get access to nonograms? Uh, now I've already mentioned nonograms.org. It's quite a good resource for free puzzles, including puzzles that are in color. Um, however, there's not really a filter on them. People submit their own and you can end up with absolutely enormous puzzles where you have no idea where to start and they tend to be a bit tedious to solve sometimes. So, I mean, if you're really desperate for something, nonograms.org is a great space, great place to go because it's got lots of different puzzles. Um, but I personally, if you're just getting into it, I recommend either uh, Picross S3 uh, this is available on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, it's a fairly cheap one. I think it's about $10 or something like that. Um, and also we've got Pokemon Picross. Now this is actually a free title or sort of free, freemium at least. Um, Pokemon Picross is a free version that's available on the 3DS. You can download that. And um, that one sort of, they gate your progress by um, only letting you cross off a certain number of squares in a day um, and it gradually fills up over time. But if you pay a bit of money, you can get that to be infinite and uh, get full access to the game like that. But um, that one's quite good because as you go through it, you collect lots of Pokemon and um, as you collect those Pokemon, they give you extra abilities to solve other puzzles. The thing about these ones is that the maximum puzzle size they get is a, um, a 15 by 20 puzzle, which is 15 down, 20 across. So they end up being smaller than most of the other nonograms that you'll find. Um, but I found them a really good way to just get a bit of practice with it, try and get the logical ideas down of what you can solve and what you can't. Uh, now, the one that I prefer using, my personal favourite, is the Pixel Puzzles magazine put out by Puzzler. Now, this, um, this skull puzzle that I solved is actually the tutorial puzzle that they give you in the, in the Pixel Puzzles magazine. And um, so if I'm just going to put that on a full screen there. So that's this one here, um, Pixel Puzzles. This is my personal favourite. And... Um, and so these, these have got quite big ones that are still relatively straightforward to solve. So this is a Frisbee one where we've got someone throwing a Frisbee in a park with a sun in the top corner there. Um, and 
I really like these ones because they're quite fun to solve and can get quite large. Uh, and they're just sort of properly put together to be quite interesting puzzles. So they're my preferred way to, or they're my preferred sort of uh, nonogram, uh, the, the, or they're, they're the way that I like to get access to the nonograms there. So um, that's what we've got there. So the few different, or the different sort of places you can get them, nonograms.org, uh, a few different Picross ones that are available on the Switch or the Puzzler Pixel Puzzles magazine there. Uh, so I really enjoy these puzzles. I find them very addictive. I uh, hope you enjoy them as well. And happy gaming. Have a great day.